uh, we got a project around mid 2020. So that's like during COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the project is in Shenzhen, and uh, which is not that far from Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, the project is basically, we are asked to design this building, about three stories uh, building, in, uh, ground up in this children's park. So we kind of like, uh, this is type of project is like, you know, sometimes even clients don't know the location, don't know the program in the beginning. So we kind of like uh, talking with landscape architect and think this T location, this T intersection could be really interesting uh, site for the project. And the project, the building architecture can not only be the, the architecture itself, but also could it be a entry to the park. So on the ground floor, we introduced this portal, uh, which basically mainly act as a gate into the park. Uh, so there's a ground floor plan and the structure, structurally, you know, everything's, a, it's, you know, it's just far away during COVID. So, and we don't know how, they don't have, they don't have too much budget on the project either. So we still have the most simple, simplest structural system, which is a concrete frame structure and with two sp uh, sculptural stairs and uh, with four big roofs. So Anton and I kind of like develop design like very quickly. I think we only had like two iterations. Um, and Ant Anton uh, came up with the, with the idea to just, uh, you know, with one big roof and one small roof on south and north uh, facades. And uh, this is the physical model uh, and uh, from another view. Um, and uh, the project is uh, completed in 2022. Uh, about, so the entire process take about two years, even though we designed like a, for about four weeks. Uh, so it's a very quick process. Um, so this is when you approach the building from the uh, uh, the road, which you will see this portal clearly, that's an entry into the park. So this is a section on that portal, which you will enter into a single story uh, space and uh, then following with a double high space with the uh, Oculus skylight. So this is a, on a single story space and it's a double height with a skylight and also you will see the entire park in front of you. Uh, so back to, so that's where you walk in and following on the second floor plan, which these two stairs can bring people up. And uh, essentially the two stairs, the three, two stairs can also bring people up to the roof, uh, which is a roof garden. And the sculpture stair, spiral stairs really sits by this double high space. So it's very clearly where you uh, can go and walking along the stairs, you will come up to the second floor and which you can look in down and also enjoying the bookstore as, which is currently in the second floor. And this is third floor plan, which is what, which is also the roof garden. And this is a roof plan. So essentially the roof garden is basically located here and this is the city beyond and this is the park uh, in the foreground. Uh, Anton, feel, feel free to me anytime, okay? Yeah, so, I, I think it's worth I, noting, I you, mentioned, you mentioned it briefly. Myself as well. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it briefly, but I think it's worth noting that the structure of the building was almost pre-established, pre, um, um, pre right? This kind of aid system. Uh, essentially, the, the building was already permitted um, to be constructed as a very kind of standard office building box. Uh, part of the part of the challenge was that we could not change the grid uh, when they when they brought us in to kind of redesign the facade. Uh, it was just going to be kind of be a facelift of the building. But once we kind of looked at the grid, we wanted to reconfigure it, and they said you can't do that. You have to stay within the confines of the predetermined a grid box. So what we actually ended up doing was we reshuffled the entire interior. So all of the program on the inside got completely reshuffled. We, as, mentioned, as Ted mentioned, we made that kind of kind of passage through the building. We thought it was kind of important, even though it's not the main entrance to the park, it's kind of a side entrance to the park. The building acts as a gateway to the park. Like you have to go through the building to go into the park. We, we thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and then, of course, we introduced the roofs, and that was like the big design, right? So if we keep this kind of, if we grandfather in this structural bay, and we start um, kind of like um, angulating out the facades to essentially create protected um, areas 
you know, on the two peripheries of the building for people to meander and sit and kind of enjoy the sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the and orientation, it, yes. Uh, sorry, just a uh, quick ahead, question. The yeah. orientation of the roof, you said it was on the north and south side. Um, what was the um, idea behind it? Was it uh, meant to be positioned along the entrance or was there any other so reason for the, the, for the sun maybe? So yeah. This side is actually facing the south. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Shenzhen, but Shenzhen city was really it was, it was pretty hot temper uh, uh, weather uh, during most time of the year. And actually, I was in, I was there last uh, September. As when I walk out of the car, my my there will be the fog on my glasses. That's how hot the, the city is. So the goal is to have a bigger canopy towards the south to really filter the sunlight so not too much light can can actually get into the interior but also provide the shading for the people can sit below and whereas the north side so the canopy is smaller because you don't need that big big of a canopy and on east and south west side we were originally designed with a solid it's actually solid glass blocks to filter the light, so it so it will gain, well, you know, reduce the uh, heat gaining into the building. So that's kind of part of design. Even though we got like some value engineering, so solid glazing block didn't happen. Whereas we just did the frosted glazing on the west and the east facades. Uh, whereas the, this is a south facade physical model, which you can see. We actually introduced the three different types of materials. One is solid, and one is perforated metal panels, and one is a per, uh, polycarbonate, which is translucent materials. So during the summer, it really can uh, filter the lights, the natural lights a lot. Uh, so again, this is underneath the big canopy. Uh, this is shots was taken in the morning, but uh, when I was there, you know, people are sitting there drinking the tea or just playing the poker. So just just the chilling. A lot of times it will be the elderly with the young uh, young kids because this is a park designed for the children. So again, from these shots, you will read three different materials uh, very clearly: perforated and the translucent and also opaque. And this is a uh, uh, facing the north. Uh, again, in the morning, but still filters the lights a lot. But uh, a lot of times, like the lights will get in like to. Uh, very beautifully, the lights got filtered, filtered when you underneath the big canopies. So again, another detail on the end edge of the canopy. Um, yeah, this is a smaller canopy facing the north. Um, and overall, we select this green color with uh, two red color sculptural stairs. And the uh, a building fits really well into this park, and we have really beautiful uh, landscape uh, around the building. Uh, and uh, yeah, during time during different time of day, the the lighting conditions changed also a lot. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty much. Uh, it's yeah. probably very quick, so, like uh, probably much faster um, than I thought. Yeah. Can I ask yeah, a question? Just, uh, yeah. If you yeah, want to keep yeah. talking about this project or we want to move to the next one? No, no, no. I just wanted to ask to uh, like how did you pick this color and this style for this building? Uh, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, I think at the beginning we're kind of looking at these kind of like Chinese scroll tapestries. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at these kind of tilt colors that we're kind of interested in. Uh, at one point we we're kind of discussing the idea of like what this building is, right? I mean, it's concrete building with steel with a steel prime outside of it. But um, in terms of like what the building is, like is this a building that's foreign and it's brought into the park? So uh, we started looking at greenhouses a lot, like these kind of buildings that are off mm-hmm. the park. So buildings that belong in a park. And a lot of these greenhouses, you know, turn of the century, like like eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, a lot of a lot of them are in Europe. Had this kind of green teal uh, teal color on the on the on the steel structures or the iron structures. We thought that was a kind of like a nice take between the greenhouse and also these kind of teal colors from these kind of traditional Chinese scrolls. Um, so some of the colors were selected from there. That's so great. And uh, a lot of the traditional Chinese architecture is also the two primary, three primary color would be a red wall with a green roof and plus sometimes plus the yellow tiles. So 
you know, round the world, typically, if you go to round the world building, he typically use either one color for the entire building or two colors, maximum for a building. So we, like, uh, it's a very short or quick design phase. So we typically are more, more confident to play two colors rather than three. So with the yellow, with the green and the red, which is typically not like, you know, best matches, but we think here the red stairs can really uh, stand out from the from the the from the green uh, scheme, the whole uh, ski structure. Um, so that's why we pick these two strong colors, which we think is actually really clearly. You can read the stairs always like clearly from um, no matter from each uh, direction. Uh, and my other question is about like designing for social space and you have this pathway through the building like was this something that you have to consider from the first stage of your concept like idea or you introduce this during the design process can you explain more about this and do you want to talk about that the passageway yes yes yeah, I mean, uh, it, well, when we reshuffled the building to us, it was clear that it's like we we didn't want to go around the building. Like we wanted to create like more, bring more importance to the building, but also activate it. Once we introduced this kind of staircase to the side, that red staircase, it was kind of very not normal to say like, hey, we're going to have to remove some of this program, right? We lost two bays through circulation, but in a way it became an internal street, right? It's almost like a, like a, temporary street that happens inside the building that then acts, allows you to access the building more clearly. So you're kind of acting, acting it off of the, the lateral sides, right? Yeah, and another is just really from uh, people's experience, let's say, in, you know, in Chinese, traditional Chinese, like a typical daily language, there's a one term called uh, the wind through the portal is like a, the typical Chinese architecture is always like a, a, a series of a column grid. And it's sometimes in the middle of the building, it's, it's typically either three bays or five bays or seven bays. And the door is always in the middle. And for those type, uh, then there's always two doors because then the wind can go through. And we call it like, you know, the wind through the portal, which can really, we this one is not like, you know, we are not playing traditional architecture here, but we kind of borrowed the idea, let the wind go through the portal. Now, during the summer, during very hot days, people can really sit on this very generous space and enjoy the natural wind and uh, the enjoy the breeze and, and it can cool them down rather than just, you know, always in, go inside and have the AC there. Yeah. And I so think, we kind I think, of think in, it's a, quite a nice social space as well. Yeah. where people can yeah. gather in and meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe in traditional Chinese architecture, they also tend to introduce some um, courtyards, right, in their houses. Yeah. Yes. So one of the ideas, and that's why we uh, introduced uh, this roof garden on the third floor. And, uh, you know, the whole park, like we worked with the landscape architect in the very beginning. Landscape architect, their design I approach is called a forest school. So they basically they have they really prioritize the, the landscape. And when we took let's say four hundred square meter footprint of building, and our approach idea is like we when we take out a four hundred square meter, we also want to bring give you back a four hundred square meter roof gardens. Of course, it's not really four hundred square meters that much, but we still like the entire third floor. We were basically the only interior is a mechanical uh, chef, mechanical room, and also two stairs. And the rest of them, we just completely gave it back to the people, give it, give it back to the landscape. But the architecture is still there. Architecture, the presence of architecture is still there. Uh, yeah. Well, I just have two more uh, last questions for me. Uh, so oh, what's yeah. the idea behind the uh, sculptural stairs? Uh, why did you feel that it had to be uh, like a, one of the focal points or it has to, to grab some um, um, attention in the, in the design? Um, Anton, you want to talk about that or you want me to talk about that? You can take it. You can take it. Yeah. Well, so... You know, the design for us, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a green structural. And uh, so typically, 
you know, typically when we took a, when we took over the project, like the the typical stairs is always like super boring and very always tucked or hidden, and we we intentionally to place two stairs on um, one is like a typical stairs. Uh, the other one is sculpture stairs on the both at in the opposite corners of the building. So, and so that we think by making it a sculpture, giving the giving the form and the playing in the architectural form, not only can make the architectural architecture moves stronger, but also can really lead the people to uh, walk up to walk upstairs. You know, we don't have escalator here, and sometimes you know, it's well felt really boring with the traditional stairs, but they are, they have more uh, interest in the sculptural like spiral stairs. So that's why uh, one of the, not only architecture, but also trying to serve, serve the, the the kids. We, because we des primarily designed this for the children. Yeah. And perhaps a uh, last question for me. I just want to go back to the choice of colors. Uh, you mentioned that it had references to the 11th century uh, paintings and scrolls. Uh, I just want to ask, like, the, what's uh, your idea behind, uh, why do you think it's important to reference, um, like, uh, historical art and tradition in this building? Because uh, another, uh, we could, you could just easily paint this white or any color, but why do you think it was important to bring, uh, to point a reference to the Chinese culture? Uh, I mean, Ted could probably answer that better, but at least for me, I mean, obviously I'm not Chinese. Uh, for me, it was an interesting kind of project because it's it's kind of a rare project to do these kind of projects that belong in the park. So for me, it was not so much a direct um, connection to to the Chinese culture in terms of the, the scrolls that were kind of doing this render or collages. And for me, it was really more about the landscape, right? Like what 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 how is landscape represented in traditional Chinese paintings, right? If this building would have been in Paris, I would have been looking at traditional French paintings, right? You try to kind of place a building into this kind of background. Um, so it's very much like a foreigner's way to look at the project, right? Like it's not really in depth. But I think the key was obviously like how I was kind of interpreting things and then how Ted, which is he's more a much more local source there. He's not from Shenzhen, but he's uh, from China. But like he was able to kind of navigate the two kind of ideas behind that. Um, so it's not so direct in terms of like the art doesn't kind of influence the building. It's more like how do you place this building in a landscape and how do you represent that in the abstract? Because we the park obviously hadn't been constructed yet. It was under it was under construction. So the it, it all kind of came together during COVID. So it's it's a very strange project to meet for me because I've never visited the site. I've never I've never seen the building even after completion. Um, so it's always been kind of this very kind of like, uh, it's almost like as real as a collage, right? Like collage and the building are as real to me as, as, as both of because they're both kind of fictional, right? Like I know the building exists in the world, but because I haven't physically seen it, they both kind of exist in the suspended animation. I don't know. It's kind of interesting to me. Yeah. I can add a little bit more, um, the, you know, the typical in the Chinese landscape, traditional, let's say Song Dynasty painting, uh, or especially Song Dynasty painting, because that's almost the highest uh, peak of the Chinese art. Uh, and uh, the painting, you know, you know, Wang Shu will talk a lot, lot of like, uh, will always refer to the traditional Chinese architecture because he's so into that scholar paintings. Uh, for me, I'm to be honest, I'm also, I received all my architecture education purely in the U.S. I, I mean, I, 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 I check out a lot of projects in China and also read books, but I never really been in an architectural, you know, academic environment when I grew up. So, but when I look at the paintings, I kind of felt the traditional scholars, Chinese scholars, will typically downplay the architecture a lot. So the Architecture is never that important. The only important architecture is the emperor, is a palace, is for the emperor, for the for the forbidden city, and that will be super highly symmetrical, and with hierarchical roofs. Uh, for us, it's but for the general public, the landscape is way more important than the architecture. The architecture is just something. It will if you something broken, you build a new one, then the, the wall. We all made a, 
out of wood and always like gonna damage the, and the, and the gone. Then they just like rebuild and rebuild, and then they're never trying new innovation in terms of the form or anything. So that essentially the mountains, waters, landscape is always like the most important thing. So another factor we are trying. We we kind of trying to approach the green color is also trying to merge the building um, into yeah. the the park with just almost the invisible in a way, but 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 you know we still have the we still want the presence of architecture. We don't want to like completely invisible. Otherwise, we'll build a, like a mirror house, right? It was fully mirrored, that fully reflective one. So, uh, but there's always a balance between architecture and the landscape. Plus, uh, I'm. Typically, you know, Western architect will, or like typically, like most architect will try to really make the architecture like super present, super important, uh, like landmark. Uh, but for us, we we are trying to find a more um, a balance point between architecture and the landscape. That's why we give that roof 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 back, the roof garden back to the park. We took out a part for the architecture, but we also always trying to. Uh, uh, make make it up for the landscape. Uh, so that's so that's a green color. It's like not too totally like merged, but also have its own identity, but also not too crazy. Not a not a yellow or completely red building or white building. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I would also like to, I, yeah. I would also like to add just one last thing about these scrolls. Yeah. I find I found fascinating. It's like it's like mm -hmm. Ed and I were kind of digging into them and like he was kind of explaining to me the history behind them. One thing that's kind of cool is that it's a continuous story, right? The narrative of this yes. it's like it, it kind of changes time. It's it changes perspective, even though it's a continuous, it's kind of very a linear storytelling. So what I found fascinating is like it's a way to kind of show all the elevations of the building in one image, right? So this is a pavilion that didn't get built. It was the second part of the project. It, 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 it got canceled through budgetary reasons. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Um, uh, not yet. I only see the project. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Okay, now I can see it. Yeah. Okay, this guy, right? Um, these kind of yeah. long scrolls. So the idea was that, that you could almost flip the building and show me all the elevations, but kind of hidden in the park. So it's one image, it's one perspective, but it's yes. it's the same building shown multiple times. It's kind of a, a different way to tell, like even though the story is linear, the building is not, right? I, I, I found that really fascinating. And then here you can kind of see how we're picking up on some of the colors, right? Uh, from these kind uh -huh. of scrolls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, I really like your visual style in presenting. Plus, just to add, um, I think all those uh, Chinese paintings were also about the landscape, right? Uh, those Chinese paintings were um, with the fogs. Uh, so I think the concept is just right about pointing towards the landscape. But, um, so I, I have yeah. one final question. Uh, since you mentioned you give the most space to people and leave it open, it's actually an odd question, but we try to ask about the experience, like the client experience, viewer experience in the projects. Was there any activity that you saw after like finishing this project that surprised you in a way? Like you say, oh, people are using this in this way. We haven't thought about this. Like this is a new thing. Well, we've had some people visit the building and like do some like candid camera shots of what's going on. And apparently it, it gets used quite a lot. One thing that Ted mentioned is that apparently there's some uh, informal gambling that's happening under the roofs, which I find kind of hilarious. Like what, we thought people would hang out under the roof, but like we didn't know they were going to be gambling them. It's kind of cool. That's good. Yeah, sometimes I do um, the, Yeah, it's not like the crazy, it's not like a, it's, it's just like, a, you know, chilling gambling, yeah, for one yeah just for fun. It's like yeah, no, much, yeah. not, not, no high stake bets it's really more kind of like you know all old, old guys hanging out throwing some money around it's kind of cool mm -hmm.